So hello everyone. Today we are going to study repeated string match. So let us understand what the question is. So the question is that you are given two strings a and b and you need to return minimum number of times you should repeat string a so that b becomes a substring of it. So what the question really is. So you are given a and you are given b. So a is a b c d and b is c d a b c d a b and you need to tell me the minimum number of times you have to repeat a such that b becomes a substring of it so for example let's say i repeat a two times so if i repeat a two times what does it become a b c d plus a b c d does this string contain b in it c d a b c d a b so it contains cd abcd but it misses out ab what about if i repeat this three times so again i will have abcd will does this now contain cd abcd ab yes it does contain as you can see right cd abcd ab so this is the question that the minimum number of times you should repeat a such that string b is the substring of it so how do we go about solving this problem as you can see this is a medium level problem and this is a question which is being asked by every single company out there so how do you solve this problem right so the approach here should be that you should try to think that you are given a and you need to find number of times you have to repeat a such that b becomes a substring of it so b can be anything so let's imagine how can uh how can b become a substring of a for like in this example you can see cd abcd ab right so abcd in the middle got matched and to match this cd i had to add another abcd in the beginning and to match this ab i had to add another abcd in the end so if you think carefully then matches can be of two types okay b can be prefix some prefix not the exact match plus n times a can occur inside it and then suffix can occur example is something that we have already seen cd and then one time abcd and then ab so this to match this cd you had to add another abcd in the beginning and to match this ab you had to add another abcd in the end what can the other match be other match be other match can be like prefix plus n times a like b is comprised of prefix plus some n times a a example for this can be simple cd abcd so this is an example so in this case what will be the answer how many times you will have to repeat a two times so if n is occurring one time inside it then one more you need to match the prefix correct and if this ab cd occurred n time then also you had to add one more abcd in the prefix to match cd abcd n times right so answer here will be n plus 1 here we know answer is n plus 2 because n for the n times a occurs in the middle and then for prefix once and for the suffix once so n plus 2 answer is n plus 2 in this case what can the other way be in which uh, b can be a you know b can be created so other way in which b can be created is that n times a plus some suffix and this example of this can be this that it is basically a b c d and then some suffix right and here again you can see that if i write abcd n times here to match the n times abcd is occurring here and then abcd once more to match the suffix then my answer will become again n plus 1 why because n times to match the abcd exactly and then once more to match the partial suffix what can the other way be in which b can be created simple is n times a and in this case answer will be no surprises 
एग्जाम्पल इज ए बी सी डी एंड आंसर फॉर दिस विल बी एन राइट राइट ऑल लाइक इन दिस केस इफ बी वॉज ए बी सी डी देन एन इज वन आंसर इज वन इफ इट वॉज ए बी सी डी ए बी सी डी देन एन इज टू बिकॉज ए इज कंप्राइज टू टाइम्स राइट इफ बी इज इक्वल टू टू ए देन दिस विल बी ए बी सी डी ए बी सी डी and then the answer will be equal to n how many times a has occurred right so as we can see that answers are only in three format n n plus 1 and n plus 2 so this problem literally breaks down into this that figuring out n and then your answer will be either n n plus 1 or n plus 2 but what is really n if you carefully see then n is nothing but if i divide length of b with length of a then i get n and then my answer is either n n plus 1 or n plus 2 and that's what i'm going to do so int length of b is equal to b dot length int length of a is equal to a dot length right and now i divide both of them to get n length of b divided by length of a and now i know that answer is either n n plus 1 or n plus 2 but how i uh, really get about it so i will create a string n times a which will be initially set to empty and then i will take a variable to count equal to n and then i'll simply do while count minus minus n a is equal to n a plus a, right? So this will be appending a n times, and that will become n a. Now, when I have got my string a appended n times, all I really need to do is if n a dot find b is equal to equal to. So in C plus plus, once you match n a in if you once you match b inside n a then a unique identifier is given basically you get the position iterator at which the match has happened and if it does not match then it returns a iterator a special iterator which is basically this string n pos so if this is not equal to this which means if this unique iterator which is basically if you don't find b in a then this iterator is returned so this is the condition for matching if b is there in a then you simply return n right if it does not match n then we know either it will be n plus 1 or n plus 2 so all i need to do here is n a is equal to again i will repeat n a plus a and i will repeat this exact same thing here and again i am going to repeat this exact same thing here n plus 2 and remember if there is no way in which you can repeat a says that b becomes a substring of it then you simply return minus 1 right so this is my approach and as you can see that i am getting correct answers simply submit this and i got accepted so this is the solution for this problem now let's see what are some scopes of optimization here right in an interview you have answered this question well so far so good but literally there is a clear scope of optimization which is that when i do string dot find then string dot find basically is a n times m operation where n is string 1 and m is string 2 basically string 1 inside which you are searching and string 2 is the string that you are searching for example if you are searching for boy in a paragraph right then the time complexity of str dot find is basically length of the paragraph times length of this term boy which is 3 so 3 times the length of paragraph which is a little inefficient right so we can choose a efficient way to implement this which is kmp right and if you want to know how kmp algorithm really works then i am linking a link to a youtube video created by me you can watch it here and in this case i am just going to code it up without explaining going to much detail i am going to code it right now basically you are searching for b in na 
and it will return true if it finds and false if it does not and the same thing I'm going to do in all the three places. And of course, it is not going to magically write it on itself. So I'm going to implement it. Bool KMP string str. We are finding a pattern inside it. So how do we really go about it? Two variable i equal to zero. G equal to zero. And before that, we compute the LPS array. All of this has been explained in my video before for KMP. Please go and watch that. To get a good idea about it and we also create vector int lps the size of the lps is length of the pattern we pass this in compute lps you get the lps array and then what do i do here? while i is less than str or length while the initial string is not complete remember kmp the real uh, mode of KMP is that I never goes back. I keeps on traversing forward and forward until it reaches the end of the string. I don't find all the occurrences of pattern str. But we need to stop at the first occurrence, right? Because we just need to return true or false. So this is how we implement it. If str i is equal to equal to pattern j, then all we do is i plus plus J plus plus and if it does not match then what do we do then if j is not equal to zero then j becomes e and this is where i use the lps array lps of j minus one and if it is equal to uh, zero then basically simply do i plus plus so that's it here now of course compute lps is gonna write on itself we need to implement that as well so let's implement compute lps compute lps will take string pattern and then vector and pass by reference lps array and let us compute this right this is also going to be very similar to the actual kmp that's the beauty of implementation of kmp again if you don't know about kmp watch my previous video but the implementation is quite straightforward so you start with i equal to one len equal to zero and lps of zero equal to zero and then while i is less than str log length if str i equal to equal to str len firstly you do len plus plus lps of i equal to len i plus plus and then there is a else case what's the else case here uh, the else case here is if j there's no j here right this length if length is not equal to zero then length is equal to lps of len minus one all of this is explained guys please do watch that video before jumping onto the implementation so we have zero okay this is done Done here. This is no, no, no. This is not the end of the while loop. Turn after the while loop. And now we are done with our compute LPS function. And now for the KMP, remember we need to return something in KMP which we aren't doing yet. So this is the condition for match when j becomes equal to pattern dot length. And right here, I will return true. If a match happens, I'll the algorithm will terminate. And if it does not terminate here, then I'm going to return false, which means I did not find a match. Right? And now, in this, you can see we did it in one go. 
and submit this and we are good see our time complexity improved from 107 to 95 and that is because of a better algorithm that we have chosen here remember although that the time taken by your algorithm to run does not determine that a time complexity is better right it depends on what input input a efficient algorithm can take much more time than a brute force algorithm if the input size is very small only on larger input does a good algorithm start reflecting in the run time taken by that program so we do not know what test cases are is deep code using so the run time here is not a good judgment of what algorithm is better and which algorithm is not better it's it should just fit uh, the it should not time out that's it and if you do a time complexity analysis then this is a uh, linear the time complexity of this is order of n plus m right so uh, this is much better than what we did before so that's it i hope you guys liked it do watch other videos on other lead code solutions thank you for today goodbye